This video is a walkthrough of paper 3H from the practice test set 3 of the new Edexcel Maths GCSE. So question 1. n is greater than minus 2 and less than or equal to 3. n is an integer, so a whole number. Write down all the possible values of n. n can't be minus 2, but it can be minus 1. So it's greater than minus 2. could be minus 1 or 0 as an integer. 1, 2, and 3 because n is less than or equal to 3. Part B, x is a number. Another number is 9 greater than x. Both numbers are whole numbers. The total of the two numbers is less than 60. Find the greatest possible value of x. So x is a number. Another number is 9 greater than x. That's x plus 9. Both numbers are whole numbers. The total of the two numbers is less than 60. x plus x plus 9 is less than 60. We can start solving this as an inequality. 2x plus 9 is less than 60. Subtract 9 from both sides. 2x is less than 51. Divide both sides by 2. So we're solving this just like an equation. x is less than... 25.5. Uh, x is a whole number, so the greatest possible value of x must be 25. Question 2. Use ruler and compasses to construct the perpendicular bisector of the line AB. You must show all your construction lines. Uh, this I obviously need to have a pair of compasses, which I can't do very well on this setup that I've got. But the principle would be to put the compass point here, make sure the compass points are the pencil goes more than halfway across, and then draw an arc with the compass point at A. Move the compass points to B, and draw the same arc same distance from the other end and then connect the two the points where your arcs cross um, if that was done accurately it would give a line that was perpendicular to the line AB so with a right angle in here which is what you're looking for showing all construction lines make sure you leave both arcs visible and both crossing points visible Question 3. Alex and Ben go to a cafe with some friends. Alex buys four cups of coffee and three cups of tea, which I've labelled as C and T. He pays a total of 6 95 Ben, different situation, five cups of coffee, two cups of tea, pays a total of £7.20. Work out the cost of each cup of coffee and cost of each cup of tea. So this is a simultaneous equations question put into a context. So Alex has four C and three cups of tea, totalling six ninety five. And Ben has five cups of coffee and two cups of tea, totaling £7.20. In order to use the elimination method to solve the simultaneous equation, I've gone and put C where I meant T there. 2T. In order to solve these simultaneous equations, I need to have either the same number of T or the same number of C. So I'm going to aim to get the same number of T by multiplying this by 2. Multiply this first one by 2, and that gives me 8c plus 6t equals 695 times 2, which is £13.90. And multiply the second one by 3 so that I end up with 6t as well. That is 15c plus 6t. £7.20 times by 3 is £21.60. 21.6 for the moment. I'll call this equation 2 and this one equation 1 and I'm going to su subtract the smaller equation 1 from 2. So 15 minus 8 gives me 7c, 6t minus 60 is 0, 21.6 minus 13.9 gives me 7.7. .7. Divide both sides by 7 and I get C equals 1.1. That's £1.10 for a cu cup of coffee. Um, I can use one of the original equations up here. Sub 
into, let's say, equation 1. 4 times coffee, 1.1, .1, plus 3 lots of the unknown cost of tea is 6.95. So that gives us 4.4 plus 3t equals 6.95. Minus 4.4 from both sides. And that gives me 3t equals... 255. Divide both sides by 3 gives me t equals 0.85. So that uh, finally put my answers back into the context. Coffee costs £1.10. T t costs costs 85 pence. Oh, it's giving me an answer line there. One pound ten. Eighty-five. I could go back and check. That would be a sensible thing to do that it works with this equation as well. So just to check that five times one pound ten plus two lots of 85 gives seven pounds 20 it does so sub it back into the second equation that you didn't use check that it works and it does so I can move on question four Beth has 600 counters three-fifths of the counters are yellow 25 percent of the counters are red the rest of the counters are green Beth is given some more red counters now the ratio of the number of green counters to the number of red counters is one to two how many red counters was Beth given? So let's just work out how many there are to begin with. So three-fifths of the counters are yellow. Three-fifths of 600 is 360. 25 percent of the counters are red. That's one quarter of 600, which is 150. The rest of the counters are green. So that's 360 yellow, 150 red. The rest of the counters are green, so 600 minus 360 minus 150. Leaves me with 90 green counters. Beth has given some more red counters, and now the ratio of number of green counters to the number of red counters is 1 to 2. So before that, we had 9150, which was a ratio of, well, not 1 to 2. In order to get 1 to 2 without changing the number of green counters, we need that to be 90 to 180, double the number of red as there are green. So she's been given from 150 to 180 counters she's been given 30 red counters question 5 work out 9.5 times 10 to the power of 9 divided by 3.8 times 10 to the power of 3 give your answer in standard form well I can do the number bit separately to the powers of 10 bit so number bit there times by 10 to the 9 divided by 10 to the power of 3 9.5 divided by 3.8 is 2.5 and that is times 10 to the power of 9 minus 3 using laws of indices is 6 and that is already in standard form I don't have to make any adjustments I've got a number between 1 and 10 and I've got 10 to the power of 6 here so that's my answer Question 6. Work out the value of x. Give your answer correct to three significant figures. This is a right angle triangle. Um, 
I've got the hypotenuse here and I've got the opposite side to the angle so I'm going to use sine because so from Sokotoa sine opposite hypotenuse so sine 43 equals opposite over hypotenuse 7.8 I'm just going to call that instead of O I'm going to call it X for that is the opposite side there um, multiplying both sides by 7.8 to get rid of that denominator get X on its own 7.8 times sine 43 equals X do that on my calculator making sure it's in the right mode sine 43 times by 7.8 is 5.31958 etc. Um, that's a sensible size answer. I can see that it's in the same region as 7.8 centimeters but shorter, so that's a sensible size answer. I'm asking if it's correct to three significant figures, so that equals 5.3. One, two, three significant figures, and that rounds up to three significant figures. Question four, a set uh, question. A, B, and C, different cities with different letters in them. List the members of the set A intersection B. That's the bit of the overlap that we're talking about if we're thinking of a Venn diagram. So then uh, letters that are in both A and B. Well, P is in both of them. R is in both of them as well. A is in both of them. G is not in this one. U is not in this one. And E is not in this one. Uh, I and S are not in, either, in both either. So that is the full list of letters, members of that set. B union C, that means everything in circle 1 or in circle 2 or in both circles if we're talking about these being B or C on a Venn diagram. So that is everything in Paris and Budapest. I don't need to list the A's twice though. So P, A, R, I, S and anything I haven't listed so far. B, U, D, got an A and a P already haven't got an E yet, got an S already, haven't got a T yet. So that is my set for B union C. Part B, D is Rome, E, Lisbon, F, Berlin. Put one of the letters D, E or F in the box below to make the statement correct. A intersection, missing letter, equals zero. So I need to find something which has no overlapping letters with A. So A is Prague. That has an E, so it's not that one. That has an E as well, so it's not that one. Lisbon and Prague don't have any of the same letters in. So A and E are the ones where, when they intersect, no value is given. So Prague, explain my answer, Prague and Lisbon do not have any of the same same letters. Eight. Here is a formula used to work out the speed V of a car making an emergency stop. So V for velo velocity, presumably. D feet is the length of the mark the car's tyres make on the road when making an emergency stop. A car makes an emergency stop. The car's tyre marks make a mark 90 feet long. Work out the speed of the car. Give your answer correct to the nearest whole number. So V equals square root of 21 times by D, which in this case is 90. D feet, so I'm just checking the units are the same. D feet is the length of the mark the car's tyres make. So yes, that's correct. V equals the square root of 21 times 90, which is the square root of 1,890. Speed of the car correct to the nearest whole number. So 
So that's the true answer, 43.4741, etc. So to the nearest whole number is 43 miles per hour. A car made an emergency stop when the car's speed was 50 miles per hour. Work out the length of the mark on the road. Give your answer correct to the nearest whole number. So same formula here. But now we know what V is and we don't know what D is. I'm going to use 50 equals square root of 21D. I need to get D on its own, essentially rearranging the formula for this. So I'm going to square both sides first of all. Fifty squared is two thousand five hundred, and that's twenty one d. To get d on its own, I'm going to divide both sides by twenty one, and that's one one nine point zero four seven, etc. Is d. So to the nearest whole number, that's one hundred and nineteen feet. Question 9. The diagram shows a large tin of pet food in the shape of a cylinder. A large, the large tin has a radius of 6.5 centimeters, as shown, and a height of 11.5 centimeters. A pet food company wants to make a new size of tin. The new tin will have a radius of 5.8 centimeters, and it will have the same volume as the large tin. Calculate the height of the new tin. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. Well, in this case, I'm just going to calculate the volume of the old tin. Um, and I won't need to use all of the figures involved. I can simplify my formula, but if I was, I, I could just use all of the numbers. So I'm going to set up my working clearly with volume of old is volume of a cylinder. I've got pi times by r squared. Radius here is 6.5, so 6.5 squared times by pi. And then to work out the volume, I'd take that area and multiply by the height of the cylinder times by 11.5, which is, I'm going to leave it in terms of pi because I think that's going to make my calculations easier for later on. So that is 485.875 pi. And that's got to have the same volume as the new one. Volume of new is expressed by uh, the new radius squared, 5.8 squared, times by pi, times by the unknown height, the new height. Which is 33.64 pi times by height. Seeing as these are equal to each other, I can set them equal to each other. 485.875 pi equals 33.64 pi times h. And I want to get h on its own, so I can divide by pi, which will cancel, and also divide both sides by this digit here, these figures here, 33.64. So that gives me 485.875 over 33.64 equals h. Which is 14.44 Etc. Give your answer correct to one decimal place, so h equals 14.4, first decimal place, centimeters. Question 10. Simon wants to raise money for charity. He designs a game for people to play. Simon uses two fair five-sided spinners for the game. People spin each spinner once. A person wins the game when both spinners land on the same letter. People pay, people pay 40p for each game they play. The prize for a win is £1. Work out if Simon is likely to raise any money for charity with this game. So for this, I'm going to use a sample space diagram. So spinner 1 
goes here, um, and spinner two goes up here, and spinner two has the options W, B, W, B, R, and spinner one has the options W, R, R, B, R. And I'm here looking for how many times the we expect the spinner to land on the same color. So that happens with white white or WW here. Same letter. W not again. B and B. W and W again. B and B again. And R with R, R, and the other R here. In total, I would have 25 possible outcomes, 5 times 5. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of those are the same letters. So probability of winning equals 7 out of 25. People pay 40p for each game they play, and the prize for a win is one pound. So let's say that we've got um, 100 games happening. Income would be 40p times by the 100 games. So. 40 pounds uh, in a hundred games I'd expect this to happen four times so four times seven people to win and that's 28 people to win so prize money given would be 28 pounds 28 times the 1 pound that they get if they win a prize um profit is 40 pounds take away 28 pounds leaving us with 12 pounds So, yes, overall, Simon is likely to raise money for charity with this game. Question 11. The value of a motorbike depreciates by 20% each year. Brian says, after two years, the value of the motorbike will have reduced by 40%. He is wrong. Explain why. Um, well, we can show this uh, in number terms by... We've got the original value. After one year, we're going to find 80% of the original price by multiplying by 0 0.8. And then the second year, we'll do the same again. So 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 is 0.64 so after two years value will be 64 percent of the original and that's a reduction of not 40 percent Reduction of 36%. I could explain that in, in more words, in more detail, but actually having done the mathematical way here, which will be necessary to show some um, mathematical evidence that this is not 40%, having done that, I think this really covers, up, co covers all of the uh, necessary explanation that goes with why he's wrong. Question 12. 
the diagram shows a regular the diagram shows a regular pentagon a b c d e the pentagon is divided into five isosceles triangles so that's important that we know that they are isosceles OA equals OB equals OC equals OD equals OE. And each of those is 6 meters, as described there. Work out the area of the pentagon. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. OK, so this is an interesting question that involves using area of a triangle equals half AB sine C. Or we could potentially divide them into right angle triangles and use trigonometry for that. But seeing as I know this rule, I'm going to use this one. Um, so I need to know each of these angles here. And that's easy to find because that's 360 degrees divided by 5. So let's say angle AOB equals 360 over 5 which is 72 degrees. Area of triangle AOB is half times A times B times sine C. So the two sides and the angle in between them. And that is 17.119 recurring, not recurring, sorry, some etc. 17.119. Um, area of pentagon is 5 times triangle AOB. I'm just going to use that figure from my calculator. So that is 85.595. Etc. Giving that correct to one decimal place is 85.6 meters squared. Question 13. The points A61 and B minus 2, 5 are on the line with equation y equals minus a half x plus 4. It's a straight line there. M is the midpoint of AB. Find an equation of the line through M that is perpendicular to that. We've got a lot of facts to remember about the line here. I'm just going to do a quick sketch of what this looks like. It doesn't have to be accurate, but to give me an idea of what's going on. I've got A at 6 across 1 up. And I've got B at minus 2 across 5 up. I'm going to just put those coordinates in there as well. That's going to help me work things out. And M is somewhere as well exactly halfway between those two. So if I look at my x-coordinates, I've got x-coordinates 6 plus minus 2 over 2 will give me my x-coordinate. That's finding the average of these two points, which is obviously the point that's in the middle. And in terms of y, I'm going to add those two you can just use common sense for this if you're not sure about using some kind of formula or method. Just counting in between these will give you the right answer. So that gives me 6 minus 2, that's 4, over 2, which is 2. And 5 plus 1 is 6, over 2, which is 3. So M is at 2, 3. We've got this line here going along, and I want to find the line that is perpendicular to that that passes through M. So perpendicular has a negative reciprocal gradient. That means that this original line that has a gradient of minus a half, the perpendicular to that has is a gradient of 2. So negative times by minus 1 and flip the fraction. I know, now know that my line takes the form y equals 2x plus c, 
Well, I don't know the constant, and I don't know what y is, but I know that the gradient of the line is 2, the negative reciprocal of that line. And I've got these two points, they pass through m, so I can use x equals 2 and y equals 3 in this equation to work out what c is. So using 2, 3, 3, the y value equals 2 times 2 plus c, 3 equals 4 plus c, get c on its own by subtracting 4 from both sides, minus 1 equals c. So this line is obviously not properly drawn, minus 1 is down here, and that line should have gone through that point there. Doesn't matter, I just use that line to, that graph to give me an idea of the whole question. So I, now that I've found what c is, I can put that back into this equation, y equals 2x minus 1. And that is the perpendicular to the line AB. Question 14. In the winter, a farmer feeds his cows with hay each day. The number of days D the hay will last is inversely proportional to the number of cows C the farmer has. The farmer has enough hay to feed 280 cows for 25 days. Find a formula for D in terms of C. Well, I'm going to start off with the original bit of information. Number of days D is inversely proportional to the number of cows C. So D is inversely proportional to C. That means that D equals some constant over C, and I know that 280 cows and 25 days is the first, well, the first pieces of information we can use to work out what this value K is. So number of days is 25 equals this value over 280 cows. So K equals, multiply both sides by 280 to get rid of that denominator. Two eighty times by twenty five is seven thousand. So that means that using this formula, D equals seven thousand over C. And that's what I've been asked to find. Find a formula for D in terms of C. The farmer has three hundred and fifty cows. How many days will the farmer be able to feed all his cows with hay? So number of days is the seven thousand over 350, which is 20, so 20 days is the answer here. Question 15. Hot drinks are served at a temperature of 70 degrees C, as marked on here. The graph shows the temperature of a hot drink as it cools in a china mug from the time it is served. So this is now the time after it's been served. Work out the rate of cooling of the drink at the time 20 minutes. So that rate word there, rate tells me I'm looking for a gradient, a change over time. So 20 minutes uh, is this value here. That's the time I'm interested in. I need to estimate the gradient at that time. So I'm going to draw a straight line, and this is part of the marks available is to draw a straight line. I'm going to estimate that as a tangent at that point, and I need to, if I was doing this um, not on computer, I would be using a ruler. I'd be doing exactly, exactly this with a ruler, lining it up somewhere within the curve, and then sliding that ruler until it hits the edge of the curve and that is my estimated tangent there. I now need to use two points on that line to estimate the gradient of that line, so that's a clear crossing of a point there. So I need to know change of y over change in x. If I look at these two values here, my y, so gradient equals change in y, over change in x. Change in y, I've got my first y value is 41 to 3 and my second y value is 31, 2, 3, 4, 5 and a half. 
corresponding x values that go with that are 10 and 20. And that's good that I have 10 minus a larger number. That's going to give me a negative number overall. And this is a negative gradient, so that's what I'm expecting. So 43 minus 35.5 divided by minus 10 gives me minus 0.75, which is a gradient. Minus 0.75 degrees centigrade per minute. Degrees centigrade per minute. Uh, so minus three quarters of a degree centigrade per minute. Three quarters would be a suitable answer there as well. Uh, with that question, it's likely that your answer will not be exactly that. Uh, the mark scheme allows for a certain range of answers. Adele grew 30 cabbages. She gave fertilizer to 15 of the cabbages. She did not give fertilizer to the other 15 cabbages. Here are the final weights in kilograms of 15 ca cabbages that Adele gave fertilizer to the ones that she gave fertilizer to. Here is some information about the final weights in kilograms of the 15 cabbages that she did not give fertilizer to. Smallest, largest, median, lower quartile, and upper quartile. Compare the distributions of the weights. Well, for this, I'm going to need to work out the median at least. To, so whenever I'm comparing distributions, I need to compare an average and a range. Um, I'm going to compare the interquartile range because that is um, a, a generally a better measure of spread to compare. Um, and I'll also go over how to find that. So the average I'm going to use is the median. She's got 15 cabbages, so the median cabbage is the one in the middle. So that is going to be the eighth value. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight should also be the eighth value from the other end of the list, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which it is. So that's a median of 1.8 compared to 1.4. Uh, the range I'm going to compare is interquartile range. So to find the quartiles of this, I need to find the values that are a quarter of the way along. She's got 15 cabbages, so I'm going to do n plus 1 over 2 for finding the median. I mean for finding for finding the median, that is correct, n plus 1 over 2, n plus 1 over 4 for finding the lower quartile. So 15 plus 1 over 4 is 16 over 4, which is 4. Fourth value here, 1.6, and the fourth value from the other end is 2.0. So let's summarize those key values that I want to use. I've got fertilizer. No fertilizer. Um, I've got a median for the fertilized ones of the ones with fertilizer, 1.8 and 1.4 with no fertilizer. Interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So in this case, that's 1.6. Uh, with a fertilizer, that is 2.0 minus 1.6 so that's 0 0.4 and for no fertilizer I've got 1.6 minus 1.2 which also equals 0 0.4 so to compare those I'll say the median weight was greater with fertilizer And I can justify that with an actual, with the actual values. 1.8 is greater than 1.4. And I should also say that the interquartile range was the same for both groups. and justify that with a number as well, 0 0.4. My calculations are up there to justify it. Question 17. A field is in the shape of a rectangle. The width of the field is 28 me meters, measured to the nearest meter. 
work out the upper bound of the width of the field. So to the nearest meter, 28.5 meters is the upper bound of the width of the field. The length of the field is 145 meters, measured to the nearest 5 meters. Work out the upper bound for the perimeter of the field. So length, upper bound, to the nearest 5 meters. This needs more thought than usual, because normally if it's just to the nearest meter, you just put up put a, one point, a 0 0.5 above the value that you've got. To the nearest 5 meters, let's say that that length was, in fact, 1 it's got to be halfway between 145 and 150. Because if it was closer to 150, that would be the cl closest 5 meters. So I want a value that's exactly in the middle here, which is 147.5. So if my I want to work out the upper bound for the perimeter of the field as a whole, I've got the two upper bounds of these for both lengths and two upper bounds of those for these lengths as well. So. for perimeter two times twenty eight point five plus two times one four seven point five and that equals three hundred and fifty two meters. Question 18. The table shows some information about the population of the United Kingdom in 2003 and 2008. Area, number of people per kilometre squared. Percentage of total UK population in each of these places. In 2008, the total population of the UK was 61 million. So that's all of these. Total is 61 million. The population of Eng England increased between 2003 and 2008. Work out this increase. So I need the number of people in each of these. So England itself, not the UK. England is in 2003 the area times the number of people per kilometer squared. 130281 times by 383. which is a long number on my calculator. So that is 49897623. 49897623. And I need to also work out the number of people in England. That's 84% of 61 million. 2008, I've got 84% is 0 0.84 times by 61 million. Which is 51,240,000. And I need to see, work out this increase. So it's not a percentage increase, it's just a number increase. And I need to give my answer correct to two significant figures. So increase is... Fifty one two forty zero 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 minus the forty nine eight nine seven six two three and that is one million three hundred and forty two thousand three hundred and seventy seven corrected two significant figures that is one million three hundred thousand. Question 19. Here is a triangle ABC. AC equals 90 meters, BC equals 60 meters, and ACB equals 130 degrees as shown. Calculate the perimeter of the triangle. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. 
When I see an angle sandwiched between two sides with measurements, I think immediately that I need to use the cosine rule. The sine rule would be good for if I knew an opposite angle and an opposite side. Cosine rule is when I don't know those things. So, cosine rule in this case, I'm looking for a side. Cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So in this case, a squared is my missing side. b and c are interchangeable in this formula, so I'm just going to make that one b and that one c. It could be the other way around. So that's 90 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 90 times 60 times cos 130. Cos 130 times by 60 times by 90 times by minus 2 added to 60 squared and 90 squared gives me 1 eight six four two point one zero six one eight that's a squared equals so square root both sides to get a that gives me an answer of a hundred and thirty six point five three six zero etc calculate the perimeter of the triangle is the final answer though, given, giving your answer correct to one decimal place. So to one decimal place, 136.5 is along here. Perimeter is 60 plus 90 plus 136.5. And that's 286.536, etc. So to one decimal place, 286.5 meters. This is the right kind of length, but I should of course be double checking it with my calculator because it's a long calculation. So that's what I would do in exam conditions, just double check the calculator work there. Question 20. The histogram shows information about the areas of some farms. 90 of the farms have an area of 10 hectares or less. So 10 hectares or less is this group here and that's representing 90 farms so that area is 90 farms I can do this in two ways I can see that that's actually three big squares which means that each big square represents 30 farms um, but I should also be labeling my axes if that's frequency density that is a width of 10 and if that represents 90 farms this value here must be 0.9 10 times 0 0.9, oops, not 0 0.9, 9 itself. 10 times 9 is 90 for that area there. So if that's 9, that must be 6, that must be 3, that must be 12, and that must be 15. 60% of the farms with an area of 100 hectares or less are arable farms. So 60% of this lot below here. Half of the farms with an area of more than 100 hectares are arable farms. Work, work out an estimate for the total number of arable farms. So I need to know the areas below here and then work out 60% of them and the areas above here and work out half of those. So just calculate the area of each block. I've got 90 in there. This is 10 times by 13. Oh, it's not 13. If that's 12 and that's 15, 30's in there, 13's in there. So each of these is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 12.4, Nope, not 0.4. That is 3 divided by the 5 things, which is 0 0.6, so that's 12.6 there. 10 times by 12.6, every square is 12.6. Um, this one is going to be, that goes up 10, 20, 30 
um, hectares. 30 times by 3, 3.6, 4.2, 4.8 is the reading on the scale there. This one I've going f got from 50 up to 100, so that's 50 times by 0 0.6, 1.2, 1.8, 2.4. This area here is 3 times 20. And this area here is 120 up to 150, so that's 30 times by its height, 0 0.6, 1.2, 1 uh, 1 1.8. 1 so each of those calculations worked out. I'm going to label in the various columns. So that's 126 in there. 30 times 4.8, 144 in here. 50 times 2.4. Is 120. 3 times 20 is 60. And 30 times 1.8 is 54. So I've now got to get some totals from this. 60% of the farms with an area of 100 hectares or less. So that is all of those added together 120 plus 144 plus 126 plus the original 90. All of that multiplied by 0 0.6 will give me 60% of those. So that's 288 farms from that bit. Half of these farms, so that's 60 plus 54 divided by 2. which is 57. And I need the total number of arable farms, so that is 288 plus 57, which is 345. 345 farms. Question 21. Last paper in the question, worth 5 marks. Solve this equation. In order to do this, uh, I should factorize first. But in this case, it's been factorized for me. So I'm going to go ahead and just multiply both sides by the denominator. Because I can't factorize that any further. And this is already fully factorized. So that gives me 5 2x plus 1 squared. I'm multiplying both sides by 4x plus 5 here, equals 5x minus 1 times by 4x plus 5. That is, I'm going to start expanding brackets here. 2x plus 1 squared is, I'll just write them out in full so that I can do them without making errors. And I'll expand these brackets here. 5x times 4x is 20x squared. Outsides, 25x insides minus 4x lasts minus 5 and I'll expand this side as well that's 5 lots of 2x times 2x is 4x squared outside is 2x insides is 2x and lasts is 1 and that's I'll start collecting like terms here 25x minus 4x is 21x minus 5 I'm going to keep on going with this until I've got a quadratic in x so 5 times 4x squared is 20x squared 5 times 2x is 10x. Ah, oh, I should put them together. 2x plus 2x is 4x, which times by 5 is 20x. And 5 times 1 is 5. If I subtract the 20x squared here from both sides, that just leaves me with 20x plus 5 equals 21x minus 5. So I'm not even going to have to solve a quadratic here. Um, I'm going to subtract 20x from both sides, which gives me 5 equals x minus 5. Add 5 to both sides, and that is 10 equals x. And that's my answer here, x equals 10. 
Um, of course, I can check that that works by putting this back into here. That would be 5 times by 2 times 10 plus 1 is 21 squared over 45 equals 5x is 10 is 50 minus 1. And just check that that works. 21 squared times by 5 divided by 45 is 49. So it does work.